All right. Good morning. Welcome to 2024 and another season of Friday Morning Fuel. I am your wonderful host, Coach Mary, and I thank you so much for being here today and joining us for a new year and new episodes. Today, we're going to be talking about using up leftovers and reducing food waste. I'm going to teach you ways to reduce, ways to reuse, and how to make your food scraps go further. So let's dive in. To highlight those points today, I'm going to be making four different things. I'm going to be making a coffee grind face mask, a lemon household cleaner, an avocado sauce, and a banana tea, which I'm going to use for plants, not for drinking. Let's begin by talking about ways to reduce our food waste. According to statistics, an estimated 30 to 40% of our entire food supply is wasted. Here are some strategies from the organization Feeding America that you can take to manage your household. Number one is to track trash. As silly as that sounds, tracking is just a habit that helps us build awareness. So keep a notepad next to your trash and mark down every food item that's pitched from leftovers to spoiled food. This will begin to give you an idea of your family's trends and how to improve. Tip number two, this one is pretty outrageous, but tip number two is to reduce your fridge space. When we open up a space, just the psychology of our minds, even when we look into some kind of a container, our mind visually wants to fill that space. So if you were to go open your fridge right now, and I will not show you my fridge, but if you were to open your fridge, how full does your fridge look? When a fridge is full, we tend to lose foods as they get rotated through and pushed to the back. So try removing one drawer and one shelf from your fridge. This will force you to physically buy less food because you don't have the space, but it'll also give you the visibility that you need to make sure that food doesn't go to waste. Is this something that'll fit for everyone? Probably not. So just use discretion for you and your household. The last thing that we can implement is to switch our shopping strategy. So here in America, most people generally do one large shopping trip for the week. However, by switching gears and shopping for a few days of food rather than a week of food, this allows us to be more intentional with our food purchases and our consumption. You can also split it up. I like to do this myself personally. I'll buy my big staples in that large weekly trip, and then I will make a second or third trip to the grocery store during the week for my produce. So that way I can get my produce as fresh as it is and just to get my nutrient intake up as well. If it feels really daunting to go to the grocery store multiple times a week, um, just know that in this day and age, we still have grocery pickup and delivery services. So maybe outsourcing those tasks could be a strategy that you can implement. All right. So I'm going to start with our first piece for today, which is the banana tea. So the banana tea is a way to use up banana peels after they are done. So with me today, I have four bananas and I have two very ripe brown and mushy bananas. I also have two very yellow, greenish bananas. So great example here of my bananas that I bought on Sunday and my bananas that I bought yesterday. So a good variety of produce here. I'm going to be using my bananas for different purposes. However, both of the peels are going to be going into a batch of banana tea. So for my ripe bananas, I'm going to be slicing those up, putting them on a tray, and then putting that tray in the smoothie to use through putting that tray into the freezer to use for smoothies at a later date. For my ripe bananas, I have been enjoying this past week overnight oats with a banana bread influence. So for that overnight oat recipe, I take one of my ripe bushy bananas, I will cut it in half, I will mash half of the banana in the bottom of my little container, whether that's a mason jar or just a bowl with a lid. And then I'll take uh, my oats, 
some chia and some flax seeds, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of vanilla. I like to add in some protein powder for just an extra boost. The milk of your choice, stir it all up, put it in the fridge and just let it sit overnight and it gets nice and thick and so good. I have been really enjoying that today, this past week. So I'm going to make two of those post show for my breakfast on Saturday and Sunday. All right, so I'm going through and I'm slowly just mashing up and breaking my banana peel into smaller pieces. I'm going to be doing this in two separate containers here. All right, so we've got our green ripe bananas here just on a sheet tray. Normally I would do this with a larger batch, but this is all I had for today when I went to the grocery store yesterday. Not a lot of options for bananas all right, so I'm going to slice these into pieces. If you like to do fruit, cut it yourself for your smoothies. Highly recommend separating those pieces and putting them in the freezer like that. So that way it exposes more surface area. Plus, if you've ever done like I have and learned the hard way, if I just take this whole banana and put it into the freezer, sure, the banana will get frozen, but then it's one large chunk. And then I have to figure out how to cut it when it's a frozen mass and it's hard for my blender to blend up. So whether it's bananas or individual fruit pieces like your berries, yes, even for your berries, I recommend separating them out and giving them space to freeze independently of one another. So bananas here are finished. I'm going to just pop those into the freezer real quick. I'm going to be making the overnight oats post show. So I will include the overnight oats recipe in the show notes if you would like to try that out for yourself. In the meantime, I'm just going to put these ripe bananas aside. There we go. So for the banana tea, folks, all we're going to do is just open up um, each of the bananas. Peels are going to go into a jar or container that has a lid. I'm going to fill it up with water. I did not think this part through. Now we're good. All right, got a bowl here. Perfect. There's one banana and here's two bananas. We're going to fill them to the top with water, seal those containers off, and let those sit for about 24 hours or so, just enough to allow time for the nutrients to seep into the bananas. So we're going to fill these up. These can sit out at room temperature or in the fridge. Either one is fine. Perfect. All right. Banana tea. I do not recommend for consumption. I like to toss these into my plants to give them just a bit of an extra boost of potassium, but also just any other nutrients that can be found in the peel. So voila, we have banana tea. So let's talk about ways to reuse prepared food and ingredients. So I pulled a lot of my teammates to see some creative ways that they reuse food. So here are some from Coach Matt. Uh, pizza toppings. So they have a tradition every week on Fridays where they like to do homemade pizzas. And so they'll take leftover stuff that's in the fridge kind of pull it out and it requires a bit of creativity but seeing what kind of pizza combinations you can come up with other fun ideas especially for those of you who like to be creative in the kitchen is creating tapas so this is a good one for when you have something that's left over that's not a large portion and not really big enough for multiple people so making tapas or smaller single servings allows you to have a variety of things. Some of my favorite strategies include stir fries and pasta medleys, just tossing whatever you have left into a stir fry with a sauce or into a pasta is a great way to use up some of those pieces as well. And then always just a good standby is to have a weekly night where you have leftovers on the menu for us that was last night since we did large batch cooking on sunday and monday by thursday food is getting ready to go bad and we just need to use it up so we had leftovers on the menu last night some ways that you can reuse ingredients 
So you can reuse ingredients in sauces and dressings, which is what we're going to demonstrate today. One of my favorites is doing infused water. So when I buy herbs, you find that they come in large batches and you might not need all of it. So what do you do with the leftover stuff? And especially I feel the stronger, more fragrant ones like mint. Mint you don't need a lot of and a little goes a long way. So I like to toss those herbs and any like leftover fruits and vegetables into water and just let that soak and i feel like i have fancy water for the day so infused waters is another good one smoothies and soups so a great way to just hide everything into one bulk meal and also just especially with soup you know this kind of cooks it it helps draw out better flavors smoothies i like to use that for my greens and things that are starting to go just toss that into a smoothie and go with it all right, so we're gonna be making today a cilantro, avocado, and lime sauce or dressing. So you can use it as salad dressing or you can use it as a accompanying sauce to a dish. So cilantro, I bought that earlier this week and I have quite a bit left over and I don't want this to go bad. So I'm gonna take my one little blender cup. I also have an avocado that is starting to go a little brown, a little soft here. So we're gonna cut that open. We're going to use up some garlic, some lime juice, and some salt. And we're going to add in a bit of avocado, avocado, not avocado oil, olive oil. We're going to add in a bit of olive oil just to kind of uh, switch things up to thin it out and give it a bit more body. All right. So the cilantro, depending on your food preferences, I personally am okay with eating the stems. The stems are edible. So I will just take my hands here. I'm going to toss it up. I might make two batches of this. This has already been rinsed off to remove any kind of dirt and anything that the plant may have been treated with before consumption here. All right, so in the cup, we've got a nice big hunk of cilantro. I've got my avocado here. Good. I will let you, if you are making this at home, measure to your heart's content. I am probably just going to use the full avocado here. Um, I'm, I know, pretty aggressive with it here. Some people will like to take a device and scrape it out. Honestly, this is a ripe enough avocado that I am just going to squeeze everything out. Okay, so avocado pits couple of things you can do with the avocado pits, um, mostly that you can reuse them and replant them. This one, not so much because I took my knife and just cut it open. So if you do want to replant your avocado seed, your avocado pit, just make sure it's not damaged from the outside. And also, while you can regrow almost anything from the seeds that we consume from our fruits and vegetables, just be mindful that a lot of things, especially fruits, take a very long time to mature and actually bear fruit. I think avocado trees, you're probably looking at about at least five years before it bears fruit. However, what a just like really nice, fun activity to just pass the time. I have a couple growing right now of a couple different lengths. I have one that's a year old and I have two more that I just started. So just in case anything dies off, we're good to go. All right, so we've got our cilantro, we've got our avocado, olive oil. So I'm probably going to go in with about a third a cup or so. I am eyeballing it here. And you can also, as you blend it, get an idea for how much you need to add. If it's too thick, you can add more. If it's not thick enough, you can add something like yogurt to the base to get it going here. All right, so I will not be blending this on camera for you guys just because of the noise disruption. We're going in with a squeeze of lime juice, a couple of cranks on the salt grinder, and then lastly, I've got a couple of cloves of garlic here that since this is all going in a blender cup, I'm not really going to mince or grate, just whole cloves I'm going to toss in and they'll get blended down. However, if you like a finer texture, 
um, definitely recommend getting it into smaller pieces. All right, so we are two down, two to go. And this is going to take us to our last section for today and talking about food scraps. So we're going to talk about different things that you can do with different kinds of food scraps. And the first thing we're going to start with is composting. So I'm sure most people here are familiar with what composting is. It's just a way for us to use food scraps. They are fed to by uh, bacteria and worms and other organisms that live in soil. They feed on those scraps and they turn it into basically more soil that we can use. So a very um, sustainable and very eco-friendly way to reuse scraps. However, if you do currently compost, you know that composting can take a lot depending on how much space you have to work with where you live. Do you live in an apartment or do you live out in a house? Do you have a backyard? There can be certainly some odors that are created in the process. And because this is food for bugs and other organisms, it's likely to attract more of those things to the process. So a couple of things to keep in mind with composting, if that is something you're interested in. One, you definitely will need like a device and a dedicated space to do that. There are many of DIY um, options that you can do for a composting device. And there are plenty of just already industrialized processes and devices that can do that for you. Um, they make small countertop models that you can use in your home if you are an apartment dweller like myself. There are also services that will collect and drop off um, that compost for you. So great options to explore as well. And depending on where you live, composting might be a service that is offered by um, the county or the city that you live in. So definitely check into waste collection where you live and see if that's an option as well. Let's talk about food or um, fruit scraps. So what are some things that you can do with leftover fruit scraps? So things like cores and peels from apples and apricots, those can be used and tossed in to make jam or a fruit sauce. Citrus rinds can be used to deodorize or lend fragrance to cleaning products, which is what we're going to be making today is a lemon household cleaner. And that'll be coming up shortly. Vegetable scraps. So with vegetable scraps, you can make your own vegetable stock with leftover onion peels, tips of carrots, trunks of celery, and broccoli. Adding scraps and seasonings, you can toss it into a large pot of water, boil it for 10 minutes, and you have your lovely own made um, stock. And you can, again, adjust that taste for your preference. So very nice way to use up those scraps. You can use the leftover bits of tomatoes to make tomato sauce. And leftover seeds, pits, and plant cuttings can be planted in your garden to make more. So lots of options there. And I know I'm just covering just a few just for the sake of time. But um, take a look at the things that you use. Again, let's take it back to those strategies from Feeding America of tracking your food waste. So as you are prepping food throughout the week, just jotting down those things that you are wasting Let's tie it back in and see if there are ways that you can use some of those food scraps to make them go a little bit further and reduce our waste output. Other food scrap options. So dry bread, not moldy bread, dry old bread can be made into croutons and breadcrumbs. Coffee grinds can be reused into your beauty routine or in your garden. So coffee grinds, I learned this through the research of this episode, that coffee grinds, when they are fresh grinds before they have been um, run through with water, are very acidic. And there are some plants that like acidity. So be careful and do your research before you just add in your coffee grinds. When the coffee grinds are spent, like the ones I have here, those acids have been neutralized. And so depending on what kind of plants you have, you might do better with the fresh grinds or the spent grinds. So little fun fact there. You can use old wine for food flavoring. So if you're making a sauce or if you're cooking up like um, a steak or anything, 
You can use wine to deglaze your pan. That just means it's going to remove all the things that are stuck and it's going to add a really nice flavor as well. And lastly, you can save animal bones, um, store them in the freezer, but you can make your own bone broth at home. So similar to your stock, you'll need a couple of pounds worth of bones. So while you're waiting to get enough bones, you can store them in the freezer every time that you get a rotisserie chicken or any like um, rump or anything like that that has bones. Keep it in a bag in the freezer and then when you're ready to make broth, um, lots of great recipes out there. So have some fun with it. All right, so we've made it to the end. We're gonna make our last two recipes for today. So we'll be making a mocha cappuccino face mask. So if you are looking to do just a fun, like cheap activity or a little spa, self-care day, um, I got you. Our mocha cappuccino face mask, we're gonna use our spent coffee grinds here. We're also gonna use cocoa powder, milk, and honey mixed together for a nice lovely face mask so let me grab my milk the recipe that i found did say to use something that has high fat so whole milk heavy cream or whole fat yogurt all right so for our mocha cappuccino face mask i'm not going to be using this until later tonight so i'm going to store this in the fridge when i'm done we're going to be using two tablespoons of used coffee grinds. So we got one and two. You can also use coffee grinds depending on the coarseness of the grind as just an exfoliant. So you can use that um, in the shower or for your pedicures. Very nice option there. So two tablespoons of grinds. We're going in with two tablespoons of cocoa powder. I got one and two, very nice. We're gonna be using three tablespoons of either whole milk, heavy cream, or yogurt. I have whole milk in the fridge, so that's what we'll be using up today. All right. And then the last piece is gonna be a little bit of honey. So. I might add a bit more milk depending on the consistency of the recipe. Here we go. I have made similar face masks in the past, especially with the whole milk and cocoa powder combo. Um, just the combination of the fats that exist in milk and then the properties of cocoa powder is a very nice moisturizing feeling. All right. So please, I do not recommend eating this if you are doing this for. Um, little humans please don't let them eat this exercise a little bit of supervision here so i'm going to stir this up we're going to pop that into the fridge and i will use that for a fun night tonight so the last thing we'll be making today and probably the thing that people are most familiar with when they think about reusing their food scraps is using citrus fruit for household cleaning options so we're going to show you a nice, really easy way to make a household cleaner using, I'm going to be using lemons today, but you can use limes, oranges, grapefruit, get really creative with your options as they're going to lend the fragrance for your things today. All right, we're going to set that aside for now. It's going to need a lot of stirring. So lemons, I've got two lemons today for my cleaner. Nice full lemons here. So I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to juice my lemons first. Um, I wish I had something that I was using the zest for. So lemons are a great food. You can use all parts of the lemon. And so we're going to juice our lemons first. When you're picking lemons, um, you want to get, depending on what kind of a lemon you need, if you need it right away or if you need it later, if you need it right away, you want it to have a little bit of give. If you're using it for later, the firm ones are generally fine. So a couple of tricks that you can use for juicing your lemon. One is to massage it. I'm going to go hand and counter for pressure. You can also very lightly microwave using heat to release some of those juices as well. So I'm going to juice my two lemons. I'm going to save that juice. Actually, I might toss it into my water right here. And then with the rinds, folks, I'm going to take the rinds and cut them into just smaller pieces. Add them to my jar here. We're going to add in about a half cup 
of white vinegar and then fill the rest with water. I'm gonna let that sit for a couple of hours. And then you can use it as is, as it to a spray bottle. Vinegar is just a very traditional, very clean household cleaning product, a cleaning ingredient. And then lemons as well, just the citric acid combined with the vinegar is a very nice cleaning solution. And that's gonna pretty much wrap us up for today for Friday morning fuel. So to recap, we talked about ways to reduce food waste. We talked about some creative ideas that you can use to um, use up your food scraps, and well as learning some fun things today on the show. So thank you so much for joining today. Um, next month, we are going to be back at it again, first Friday of the month. 9 a.m. on Instagram and Teams. And I thank you guys all for joining. Have a wonderful and lovely weekend. I'm going to upload um, the recipes for the things that I made today into our Teams chat and into the show notes as well. So thank you, everyone, and have a great weekend. Here we go.